Welcome back to page 121. So you're starting a traveler campaign. Excellent idea, but daunting. Where do you start? Traveler's got over 40 years of published material. It's a massive library, hundreds of books of different things you can do and different toys you can play with. It can be hard to decide how you want to establish your campaign. Well, that's the series of videos is about. It's about helping narrow the focus, deciding your style of campaign, how you want to run it, um, things like that, just to kind of help uh, people find their way through the traveler wilderness. Just some tips I've used as a, a traveler GM over the years, some ideas on how I feel it's best to start a campaign, and then in future videos, we'll go into running the actual campaign. So for today's video, it's going to be about starting the campaign. You're going to choose when you're going to run it, what style, uh, what uh, system you're going to use, everything. And that's going to be before you even get to talking about rolling up characters. So today on page 121, starting a traveler campaign. The first thing you have to ask yourself when you're starting a new traveler campaign is when. When does your campaign take place? Traveler has over 40 years of development and there are many times of Traveler that you can play. You could play First Imperium or Second Imperium, developing a lot of your own material there although there is some available, or it could be the beginning of the third Imperium in Milieu Zero, which was in Mark Miller's Traveler. So you could begin in core and start expanding outward, your tech level topping out around tech level 12. Or perhaps you're in the Salamani Rim War, that would be around 900. That's covered very well in the T20 supplements. Or perhaps you're going to be in the Golden Age, which is what this map is set to, which is roughly 1105 in the third Imperium. Or you could be in the future, 1201 uh, of the No Imperium, uh, after the events of Travel of the New Era, and you'd be down around this area. So really, you have to ask yourself when you're going to start. For purposes of these videos, we're going to be starting in the year 1105 of the Third Imperium, otherwise known as the Golden Age of Traveler. That's my favorite era to play in, and has been for decades, and... Uh, Starting a new Traveler campaign, I thought, yeah, I'm going back to Roots. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start in 1105, and we're going to have a little fun with that. So now that you've settled what era you're going to play, you have to decide where you're going to play. Am I going to be using certain aliens, such as Kukri? If I'm going to have some stories evol involving the Kukri, I'm going to need to stay somewhere around the 2000 worlds. The Kukri are not a race that travels very well in space. They can, of course, but it's not their common thing. It's rather uncommon to encounter Kukri outside the 2000 worlds. So if you're going to choose to do something with them, you're pretty much going to be around the Gateway, Ley, Crucis Margin, or Glimmer Drift regions. And I've run these for many campaigns simply because these are some of the earliest ones that were developed, these sectors, developed by Judges Guild back in the very early 80s, 80, 81, around in there. These, of course, the Judges Guild are no longer canon, but they're still fun. So if I want Kukri in my game, I'm going to pretty much be limited here or somehow in the 2000 worlds. Well, maybe I want Ivers in my game. Well, again, that's a race that doesn't travel terribly far as a rule, but I could go ahead and I could set myself still in the Crucis margin. Uh, Hinterworlds, any of these, because this be an intersection between the Hivers and the 2000 Worlds. So I've got to decide kind of where I want to be as far as that goes. Do I want to be involved in the Salamani Sphere? Do I want to be uh, in the Salamani Rim, maybe even on Terra, occupied by Imperial forces, but lots of uh, counter groups trying to free Terra from Imperial rule? I could be in Diaspora Sector, which is a pretty settled area in 1105. Or maybe I want the Aslan, so I can be in Reaver's Deep or Dark Nebula, both recently developed by uh, Mongoose Traveler, and subjects of old stuff. These used to be uh, ones that would pop up now and again from different companies. They were kind of a referee's preserve for a while, too, in the old Traveler, where they were left un purposely undeveloped, so you could run your campaigns there. So maybe I want the Aslan to be an important part of my campaign. Now, the Aslan are not as difficult to get to other parts of the universe because they do travel. So maybe, whoops, didn't want to go that far out. Maybe I want to have the Vargir involved. 
Maybe I want my character to be a Vargir, so I decide I'm going to start out in Windhorm in the Vargir Extents. Or maybe even better in Corridor or Vland. Both develop, but especially Corridor, you're getting into kind of a frontier area with lots of invasions by pirates from the Vargir Extents and things like that. But again, Vargir are a tra race that travels well in space. So now we get down to the Zodani. Maybe I want to interact with these psionic Zodani. Well, definitely Spinward Marches, Deneb, Trojan Reach, the Beyond. Those are all good places to, to be involved, to, to have your campaign if you want the Zodani involved. So you're going to ask yourself where you want to be. Maybe I want to be in Core and I want to do a bunch of political intrigue. So I'm going to be in Core Sector near Capital or on Capital. It's really up to you. For my purposes and for the purposes of these videos, I'm going to go where I'm starting up the campaign I'm running now, which is going to be in the Spinward Marches. I love the marches. They're the oldest developed section of Traveler, uh, having been the first place that they developed any universe for Traveler after initially publishing Traveler and saying, well, we're not going to publish an established universe. That's up to you guys. Fan Pressure actually talked them into developing the Spinward Marches, which was this far-flung fringe of an imperial empire, the imperial empires were done, it, of an empire uh, spanning many worlds, and this would be the farthest reaches. Once they developed Spinward Marches, they kind of went back and developed the rest of the Imperium. So I love the Marches for that reason. That's where my first Traveler campaign that I was a player in was set, and that's where I've set many of mine. So now I want to decide where in the Spinward Marches I want to be. Do I want to be in the Sword Worlds, perhaps? That's outside the Imperium, but it's a very dynamic uh, section where there are basically space Vikings uh, riding around. That's actually a fun area to, to game in. One of my personal favorites is District 268. There is a great box set on District 268 that I've covered in another video uh, in my, on my channel, but you don't need the box to enjoy District 268. We have the Traveler map, which gives us the entire breakdown here of the District 268 subsector. So District 268 is really nice because it's just outside the Imperium, so you get that whole frontier feel without being completely away from the Imperium. It's also got a lot of nice Jump 1 mains running all around. You've got the five six sisters right there through District 268 all the way up into Glisten, up into the Sword Worlds. You've got a lot of nice Jump 1, maximum Jump 2 mains sitting around here. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to be in District 268, and I'm going to be uh, working here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up outside the Imperium. So I'm looking around, and I'm, I want something nice as far as my uh, my area goes, but I don't want to have anything that's too developed. So maybe I'll take a look at Walston. By the way, I've always suspected that Walston is named for the actor Ray Walston, who was Uncle Martin in My Favorite Martian. I've always suspected that they named Walston for him. So Walston seems like a pretty good choice. It's got a Class C starport. A class E, just one jump away, a D, a C, and an X. So it's very frontier. That's good. It's got a gas giant. Also good. Wilderness refueling. I like this. Okay. But as a new game and as a, a GM who maybe is getting new to Traveler, Walston, in my opinion, is a terrible place to start. But wait, you just said it's good. If I develop Walston... If I go on to Walston, I have to go ahead and develop the planet of Walston. Of course, I have to tell the people what's on it. Now, in mustering out, say, a scout, there's a good chance I'm going to get part of or a, a ship. Any character has a chance of getting ship shares, and the least jump any ship can do is a one. This is why Walston is a bad choice. I not only have to develop the Walston system, I have to be ready to deal with Nurton, Bowman, Squalelia, and Flexos, because I can have my players jump to any one of these. Now, as an experienced GM, that's not a problem. You can kind of wing that kind of thing. That's no big deal. Uh, you just uh, plop, plop them here in Walston. You try to lead the game maybe to, to Bowman, to the Bowman Belt, another good box set that uh, was out at uh, in the early 80s from uh, Game Designers Workshop, also available on Drive-Thru RPG. But, okay, I could have them jump to Bowman. Well, I could start him in Bowman. Okay, Bowman seems like a good choice. Oh, wait a minute, I've got the same problem. Faldor, Nax, 
Squalelia again, and Walston would all have to be developed if I'm starting in Bowman. <clears throat> so what I do, if it's a brand new campaign, the characters aren't really fleshed out, and they haven't quite decided what they want to do, I go ahead and take them down to kind of what I call a dead end kind of area. And in my case, I chose Motmos. It's got a Class B starport, which is nice. It does not have a gas giant, so we're going to have to refuel at the starport. Uh, it's it's pretty good choice. I, I've got a decent-sized planet. The law level is high, but not ridiculous. I'm liking it. Okay, so I'm going to go to Motmos. Why Motmos? Well, if I get to jump one ship, I can only go to Trexalon. That means I only have to prepare one other area. Even a jump two ship, the most I have to do is pre prepare two systems for my players. Now, even though I'm going to lead the game to go to Trexalon as a jump one, if they've got a jump two, they might decide they go to have to go to Pavabid, or Pavabid, however you want to say it, go here for whatever reason, and then come back to Trexalon to stay in your, your game. The important thing to remember is player characters are always going to mess up what you think they're going to do. That's the idea. The players have their own minds. The only fun way to run a game is to let the players have their own minds. You as the GM have to be ready for that. So if i am got to be ready for that, then I'm going to pick a dead-end area to start. Now, another reason why Motmos is a great place to start, if I've got a jump one ship, this is part of a jump one main. Look at all these jump one destinations up and down into the Imperium, going straight up, coming over here. Here we go. I have literally hundreds of options by choosing this one little seemingly dead end area. I can keep my players with their free will, their ability to choose where they're going to go and why they're going to go there. Very important for the enjoyment of any game. But I can limit them by geography as to where they can go at the most. Now, if they have a jump two vessel and they get to Pava Bid, now I do have other options. I have one, two, three, four places they can go then. So it's not going to stay isolated, nor should it. I want to start out here because I want everybody to get a feel for their ship, the characters, what they're going to be doing, uh, how they're going to play their characters. A good way to, to get a feel for that is to do a couple of games where they're in a limited geographic area. Okay, I've picked my era that I'm going to be running my Traveler campaign in. That's going to be 1105 of the Golden Age of the Empire, Third Imperium, where the bulk of Traveler stuff is set, especially the current Mongo stuff. I've chosen Motmos, which is a Class B star, has a Class B star port just outside the Imperium. And I've got to decide next the style of campaign I'm going to be running. Uh, are the player characters going to be merchants? Are they going to be trying to trade goods and make a profit going up and down these various jump one mains? Are they going to be troubleshooters who are just getting together in their, their ship and, and going out and finding jobs where they can uh, use some of their military skills and, and earn some profit that way? Or is it going to be a military campaign? Maybe I'm from the Imperial Navy and I'm on an extended mission starting in Montmos. Uh, running a military campaign can be a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, it takes a more mature gaming group. You're going to have to have somebody decide who the, the captain is and make sure that the captain doesn't abuse the position. But that can be a very rewarding campaign. Uh, or maybe it's going to be a mercenary group starting out on Montmos. Maybe that's their home planet and they're going to be moving out from there. So the next thing you do have to decide is what style of campaign you're going to run. The style of campaign that I'm starting up, or have started up, is they're just adventurers. It's your standard traveler. They've all been in different services over their careers. They have decided that it's time to make their money on their own, having retired from their careers. So they're all post whatever career they were in, and now they're going forward uh, to earn some money. So the next step you're going to have to decide is the ship. Oh, wait. Not yet. You can't jump the gun on the ship because you have to get into player character creation. A lot of what happens in player character creation is going to dictate what happens with your ship. So then in the next video, I'm going to talk about deciding the final version of your campaign and then 
doing a session zero. Session zero being where you're all going to sit around and roll up your traveler characters and decide what type of character your players are going to be playing. And it, it could be a lot of fun. So we're going to discuss session zero in the next video and then what happens out of session zero and how that will dictate and shape your campaign. So that's it for today for page 121. For part one of this series, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope you'll come back for the, the future parts. I have no idea how many parts this is going to, to be. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to find its own distance and it's going to depend on, on feedback from you guys. So that's all I've got for today. Uh, please remember the Patreon. Uh, I want to keep the channel going. I'm going to need a little help to, to continue this channel. Uh, so please take a look at it. If you can help out, that would be wonderful. So that's all I've got to say for today on Traveler and on page 121. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.